Today we are going to discuss about the career in pharmaceutical business analytics. Business analytics, all of you are aware and some of you, anyone heard of the business analytics? We sent some communication recently, you must have read some information about business analytics as a career. Yes, please. Yeah. Sit so up. Keep sitting. Proper information business. Sorry? Pharmaceutical business. Proper information not available. Okay, it's not available. On business analytics. Okay. Anyone general business analytics? Anyone is aware? Uh, it is general finding the risks and benefits for promoting the pharmaceutical products. You know, think he. Where we will launch? 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 We use the information in a more scientific manner. We analyze that information to take informed business decisions. So today, every business, whether it's the telecom or the financial services or the healthcare, retail, Amazon, food, Zomato, all kind of companies, they churn a lot of data. A lot of data comes into the business every day basis. We, in the telecom, if you see millions of phone calls happen, millions of text messages happen every day, millions of people on Amazon are buying goods. Uh, every day on Zomato and Swiggy, at least most of you would be ordering twice a day something on the Swiggy or Zomato. Mm -hmm. So all this is generating a lot of data. Now what do I do? I order butter chicken and naan, 2 lakh people, other people also order butter chicken, butter chicken and naan. But what does that, that information is there. But if someone really wants to use that information to see what is India's most favorite food actually and develop your business strategies accordingly, will give you a lot of strength and power as a company. The same happens in pharmaceutical industry, in healthcare industry in health insurance space where millions of transactions, the billions of transactions are happening every day. A lot of patients go to doctor, they see the doctor, consultation happens, what after that? Your prescription is generated, what after that? Is that end of road for information? No. Mm -hmm. That prescription is very powerful in generating the data which will give you information which will give you the analysis which will, which will help you actually in making very strong clinical decisions. Pharmaceutical, new drugs. How do I develop new drug today? The new drug has to be developed with a lot of research. You can't just take a decision one fine day I'm going to develop a drug for the head and neck cancer. No, that's a probably a way which is 50 years back or 70 years back we were talking about the developing drugs that way. Today we need the data, we need the information, we need the scientific information to see where the, what kind of trends in cancer are there, what kind of drugs, existing drugs are there, which are the drugs under the pipeline in the research, how the head and neck cancer is progressing and all this data will give you the information so powerful that you can take an informed decision. So all this is part of the business analytics in the pharmaceutical industry. There are millions of other case studies. There are a lot of great work our partner Shmadeva is doing in that space. And today we have uh, Mr. Karthik, uh, uh, Karthik Vishwanathan amongst us. He is the CEO of uh, Madeva. So I'll quickly sort of uh, give you his the amount of experience he has. I can't express in a couple of lines. So I'll read out his profile to you. Karthik is a qualified civil engineer from the College of Engineering, Pune. Hold a postgraduate degree in management from Pune University. He has got 24 years of experience in the field of data analytics. So 24 years is practically has been part of the industry actually at the early stage where the uh, analytics has grown. They have you know developed the strategy. Work with the global analytics companies like Cantor, Nielsen, Gallup. Good morning, Dr. 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 Good morning, Dr.
Smith. He started his own business in the field of data analytics in 2009. Worked with global pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, BMS, Sanofi. Apart from pharma, he has also done analytics in manufacturing, service industry, media, telecom, retail and education sectors. He has worked with the clients in data across a broad spectrum of countries and cultures. As CEO of JSM in Madeva, his focus is to create solutions that are available for the decision makers and deployed on tools that are common, mobile, tablets, PCs, so convergence of technology. He believes that the future belongs to those organizations that can get the best out of people and data. Karthik's philosophy for analytics revolves around two key aspects. First, analytics should help the decision maker at the right time, at the right place. That is, analytics is not about what data scientists do, but about what end users consume. Secondly, the return on investment in analytics should be measurable and impact of analytics should be quantifiable. How we can sort of, after making the investment into the data, how we can actually uh, make profit. So on this note, I would like to welcome Karthi. Uh, I also have also very fortunate to have Dr. Colonel Anmol Kala. Colonel, he is Colonel retired AD Corps, BSc, BDS, BDS MDS, uh, Ortho Germany, an awarded clinician and a distinguished professor with over 40 years of experience. A graduate with gold medal in University Roll of Honor, MDS from AFMC, AFMC Pune. Dr. Kala has worked extensively in healthcare policy making and administration as a consultant to the Dental Council of India. He has also presented on several occasions to the Union Health Minister, Erstwhile Planning Commission of India, the National Knowledge Commission, Health Task Force, and ICLN. He is a member of the National Clinical Establishment Council and has tendered evidence to the Parliament Subcommittee on Health. He has been a member of the evidence-based uh, healthcare Oxford UK since 2000. He writes for various international publications and is on editorial board of several prestigious international journals and organizations. At Madeva, Dr. Kala has been the chief architect in shaping the platform towards future ready value proposition. I'd like to welcome Dr. Kala. Thank you so much for coming over. Thank you, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kala actually to address us and give us the perspective on business and that Good afternoon. So, I know I'm perhaps the least qualified person to be speaking about Kamal and Karthik, but I'm here for a different reason, and I'm here for a reason that concerns all of us. I think there are a couple of things that are happening. All of you are young, and I'm going to ask you this question. I ask a lot of people. I mean, you can you can speak to me here. Right? I'm here just to share a few thoughts with you, as somebody who's been around a bit in the world. So tell me, are you happy? How are you happy? Are you good about planet Earth? Or do you think that we've reached the other end and and we have nothing to look forward to. Sir, are you happy? We are only going with flow. With the perfect, perfect, in. perfect. So I think I think uh, the, the flow demands what? The flow demands change. The flow demands a radical change in our mindset. It's not thinking. Uh, the jobs of tomorrow don't exist today. I'll be honest with you. When we started thinking about analytics and healthcare, they don't exist today. Technologies which have come in, uh, the potential has not been realized. And the ability to use the potential is what is going to define your success in the I don't think the jobs are going to run short. It's just that the job profiles will change. People uh, will have to evolve to using technologies to what end. Okay, so I think that's where 
when this whole thought started that you know we should look at what analytics is, and whether where is it going to take us, is it going to change healthcare? I think we are the reason you see so much of our people in the world, and I'm and I'm saying it from a social perspective, that if you look back, every time there has been a major shift in technology or social change, there have been wars, there have been unpleasantness. Let's go back to the First World War. The first thing that ever happened was that when you know manufacturers started and the agricultural society conflicted with manufacturers, the industrial revolution came. Then what happened? The Second World War took place because society was not there. I think what we are facing and what the younger generation here and all of you are probably looking is you're looking at a radical change in the world. And that has been brought in, I think, by technology, by the fact that now you have the power to be able to see things that were not there earlier, the ability to connect with a world that is much larger. The internet is not the end, it's just a means to the end. The question is, social networking connectivity brings us back to the fact that what is it that defines our decision making today? I'm here as a clinician who's been around for 43 years, 45 years. And, and truthfully, my engagement with Karthik and this whole team as to why a person like me who practices, I still have. Where does it come in? Has this technology really changed this little connect between you and me, between the doctor and the patient? That was the challenge to look at it. And so I'm, I'm going to throw how long does it take for a consult in the world? You've all been to doctors, you've taken your family. On an average, how much time did the doctor spend with you? Seven to ten minutes. There you go. He said it. Okay? It's 20 minutes in the US, it's nine minutes in Singapore. Excuse me, uh, you you are very lucky, or you had a good doctor because the uh, the, the, the established fact is two and a half minutes. Uh, in two and a half minutes, a decision has been taken, right? And and uh, you want to take it further? Pakistan is even greater. I saw this in Pakistan. It's one hour forty, uh, one minute forty seconds before a doctor. Have you seen what is the average time when you're talking to a doctor before the doctor interrupts you? Yes, sir. You know where, what we suffer from. We suffer from cognitive dissonance. Let me give big names. We suffer from the fact that we always prematurely <coughs> close. I've started talking to you. I'm thinking about something. The first three things that have gone, I've gone into, you know, what's what's called the type one sort of decision making. That I've already presumed that what is wrong with you, and the rest you're telling me is flying past because I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do next, and I take a decision and I take it to you. For you, I'm God. For me, I'm failing because the, look at the world around you. Older people, the pool of circulating disease is growing, right? Decision making is complex. And trust me, the doctors at the best of times are stretched. Uh, the act of looking at the screen and coming back to you, I mean, if you think, uh, doctors can multitask, it's a myth. The moment stats show that the moment I'm talking to you and I look at the screen, for one and a half minutes I've gone blank. I've lost my train of So this whole story of analytics and of looking at how healthcare is going to transform and what's the value of presenting a support system to the clinician comes from this. That at the best of times, it's a premature closure. It's heuristical thinking that you know, uh, because you have a cough and cold, a antibiotic pill. You know, it's it's this this is what doctors suffer from a bias of taking immediate closure, not waiting for decisions. So our challenge here was that volumes of data is created in healthcare. In companies here, all of you here, you know what? We've traditionally archived it. We take the data and we store it. And then somebody says, yeah, I've got to write a paper. I mean, uh, while I was in active teaching, I had to, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, sort of speak on, uh, you know, I had to publish papers because to maintain yourself in an academic position, you have to publish, you have to have that many points, you know. Uh, otherwise, you, you fall short of your requirements. So you start looking for a paper, so then you start taking your archives. 
right? Uh, let's take uh, a very simple thing of low dosage aspirin. I'm just telling you that uh, for years it's been prescribed to everyone. The latest study, which came off the back of five million people being assessed for usage of aspirin, shows that it does more damage. More people die of brain bleeds rather than that low dosage aspirin preventing clots in the brain. So the second change that has come into the field of health analytics is that you cannot rely on retrospective studies which have been done. Pharmaceutical industries look for it. You can't do it because things are going to change. Now we are talking of an era of personalized medicine. We are talking of an era, we are talking of nutritional genomics, we are talking of pharmacogenomics where I'll tell you what, I mean, the medicine that works for me will not work for you. It may be a great branded drug, but it's not going to work because every individual brings in a different physiology, a different ability to metabolize medicines. So don't ever hesitate if you go to a doctor, he says, I've given you this. If you're not happy, just go back and tell him I'm not. So here is the challenge that can you take this data? <coughs> can you bring it? to a point where on a day-to-day -day basis, a doctor who's working gets to see what's happening and his decision-making is influenced. Trust me, it's not just enough to have a fancy scheme. What we are trying to do is that, can we change your thinking? Can we increase this little time that you get with the doctor? Okay, 90 seconds is the average time before a doctor interrupts you after he's asked you a question. This is validated. That you go to the doctor and you got a cough and cold, you got a stomach upset, and you say, hey, Doc Saab, main iske liye hai. he say, Achha, kab se hai, kitna hai. In 90 seconds, he will interrupt you. He won't even let you finish your story. He'll say, Theek hai. Ye hai, baad Am I right? Yes. All of you want to agree with me? Yes. Yes. Right. But but the tragedy is that we are suffering because of it, we are dying because of it. Uh, the biggest threat to mankind has been this indiscriminate use of antibiotics. Today, trust me, there are some 300 plus antibiotics. We are resistant to all except four. We are killing ourselves. And you know why? Because you don't have time to focus, to listen to the patient. And what you do is you say, I have tea. Job. When you go back after three days, he doesn't know what he did for you in the first place. Right? You go back after for three days, you say, hey, Doctor, I'm still not feeling well. How many things have you done in the past three days? I have done the amoxicillin. I have done the amoxicillin. I have done the azithralin. Now, here's an open thing to all of you, please. The next time the doctor does it, you say, sorry, Doctor, I'm not taking it. You know, because you're killing yourself. So, the second challenge is that can you give a prompt to the doctor? Can the doctor, while he's talking to you, just have the ability to perceive that what did he do? And in the light of his past experience, in the light of what the world is doing, can he be given a prompt that if you give this medicine, this person is probably going to be? The largest malpractice settlement in India was 6 crores. 11. 11 crores, sorry, in Calcutta. And it was very simple that somebody from the US came, the lady had a simple allergy, she went to a doctor, he never bothered to check what was her past history, that she was suffering from a disease called epidermolysis, bullosa dystrophica, and uh, he never knew the history, he never knew anything, he just went the way you go, allergy hai, acha aap anti-allergy Okay, all of you have done it? You have an itch, what does the doctor prescribe for you? Citrus. <laughs> Exactly what it Three days later, the thing got worse. So he doubled the dose. And then he found it got worse. He took a few blood tests, but he never bothered to look at it. He put the person on steroids. Now what happens when you go on steroids? Steroids lower your immunity. Steroids yes. do a lot of things. To cut a long story short, the lady lost all her flesh and skin. It just fell off her bones and she died. All he needed to do was to stop when not prescribed steroids. That's it. She would have been limited. So I think the time has come 
where healthcare analytics had to change. And you're probably in the right zone and in the right field because at the moment, whatever has been done for hospitals is simply to create a you know a platform where you can engage people, you can take an appointment and come back. Nobody's looked at the fact that this volumes of data that is archived, can it be given back to the doctor? Can it be brought to a level where me, when I'm consulting you, I'm looking at the screen, can it give me a prompt? Can I focus and give you precision care? Can I not over-prescribe drugs because I will see what's been done for you and I will probably get a prompt that, listen, this medicine worked in this people of this age group for this period of time. I think that's where <coughs> analytics, healthcare analytics are heading. I think the world is struggling with it. Probably here we've taken the lead on it. Eventually it's going to be predictive and prescriptive and I still don't think that, uh, you know, I've been asked this question before, do you, you think this will take over a doctor's job? Because when you go talk to a doctor and say, doctor, what do you do? He says, yeah, I don't tell me that a machine is going to prescribe. No, no. It's always going to be decision support systems. That's what's going to work. And I think the government is looking to engage on a larger platform. Communities are being embedded. So I think you're at the brink of a whole new spectrum of jobs in healthcare which are open. This ability to see the light at the end of reams of data is what brings analytics to the set. I don't know what I did. By taking healthcare today, and this comes from a colleague of mine who's the chief of cardiology in a hospital, and he said it, Karthik Mosin, and he says, you know what, today healthcare is like you walk into a mall, you buy a procedure, you walk out. Neither the doctor knows what happened before, and he doesn't know what's happening after, and you walk in and you walk out. And chronic diseases are treated at home. So I think uh, you probably made a great choice you are here. This should be an interesting interaction to see where you know you can sort of get up and influence healthcare and doctors and perhaps change things for all of us. I, I think there's a altruistic motive in what we are doing is that perhaps just make healthcare safer. It's a question of the zebra in a uh, you know in a group of horses. You see, with with human beings, you can't afford to miss the zebra. A bad decision in corporate the healthcare, might, you know, in corporate culture, might mean some business losses. But this is human life you're talking about, and it's complex. Uh, by the age of 45, an average individual is taking at least four categories of drugs. What's the interaction between the food you eat and the next drug that the doc doctor is prescribing? So it's complex. It's an interesting area. It's beginning to emerge. The world is looking at, you know, providing. Uh, predictive and prescriptive support to doctors. So I think uh, all of you are you know, right there looking at a very, very positive future. I think the jobs will just come in. It's just a matter of time. Because the value has not been addressed. So uh, lovely to meet all of you. And thank you, Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you have any questions, you're welcome to shoot. Uh, so, please, any question? Yes, sir, please. Sir, you said that if you provide this data analysis to your doctors, so they might like study that and according to that they can prescribe the medicines. Yeah. But do you really think that they are going to do that? Uh, sir, it's a matter of survival. Because like uh, we are, you have like the more experience from us. So you have like, like come across this whole world scenario. So do you really think that if you provide this data analysis I, to I, your doctors I, I, and they will it's a, it's a very valid point, because at the end of the day, it means a change in thinking. But let me tell you, uh, the doctor basically wants to do good for you, okay? His problem is his time and being stretched and the inability to go and sit in a library or read a journal or update himself. I, my personal feeling is, and I can tell you from my colleagues and everybody, that if I see it, I would have spent five minutes on this. Sorry, yeah, why did I miss it? Sorry to interrupt you, Nitin. But like talking, as you said, like doctors are there to help to us. But like rather than uh, what I feel 
as a youth, like uh, they spend more of time to like social media or technologies rather than uh, like reading this data analysis reports or the journals. Uh, like if they spend this uh, that much time on these reports, so they might like change their thinking. But uh, rather than their thinking of ways to create deep, like their own business, because you said that they spend 90 seconds of time before they interrupt. So in, during that 90 seconds, they have like several of thousand demos that what test to prescribe them how to create a business from this question. So like their main focus is on the business, not on our helping our. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's the yeah. that's the root of problems in healthcare, not just in India but around the world. You've articulated it very well. But I can tell you this uh, that the entire world is waking up to this. Let me tell you the process of teaching is changing. Uh, this is where the interactions, because we, I do teach a lot, and you know, this is where the interactions at the platform with the doctors of today is beginning to take place. But you'd be surprised, Karthik, to tell you that we have interest from people who've come in and sat with us. Uh, the guys in Max are not interested, but smaller towns you find people are more concerned. There are people who actually want to pick it up. Honestly, I mean, I mean, this is a big learning. The big hospitals, the big specialists, they just think that they know it all or they don't have the time or they're not busy making money. But even to make money today, uh, you know what's going to change this whole game? Number one is insurance. It's coming. So I'm not going to pay for anything which I don't see you now. I think a part of this, he said, it, evidence-based healthcare came in the year 2000. It was introduced actually in 84 in my master's in Oxford. It was a movement to bring doctors to a platform to say that can you justify what you're doing on the basis of science. Yeah, I remember going to a running a workshop at the Rajiv Gandhi University and there was a very senior physician and he said, Doctor, are you trying to tell me my experience of <coughs> I said, no, I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, can you justify your decision? So there is a change coming with it. There is insurance. There is the medical legal acts, you know, access which is coming alive. There's litigation coming alive. I'm now in a position where <coughs> I'm going to be forced to defend my decision. Right? And my request to all of you personally is don't take the doctor for God value. Question him, stop him and say, Doctor, I'm paying your concern. You don't have the time, I'll go to another doctor. But you will listen to me, you will tell me, you will take a history. You, you've said it, and, and this is where the change is coming, not just here. Trust me, Singapore is nine minutes here. You know, I mean, you know, far away. The US is 20, but the US again, healthcare, you know what it is. So I think you can be the drivers of the change. And, and our experience with doctors whom we've connected over the last few years has been that if you show to them care, this is going to be given to you on a platform where you can see it and use it, it will work. I think, as I said, you, you have to drive a change. And it's coming. I think it's, you see, what's a paradigm shift here? One whole, Carl Popper spoke about scientific <coughs> revolution, Kuhn spoke about all this paradigm shift. What happens is, paradigm shift, healthcare is shift. Now, you can either be a part of the shift, and I'm talking from the medical or the doctor's perspective, or you'll get left. But you said it, there's bias, there's ego, uh, this, this, this comfort of status quo, yeah, I'll do it, it's okay, it's been so long. You know, my sister lives here, I had to fight with the doctor, he's an MRCP, I said, but the last paper you read is in 1965. No, no, I prescribed this drug to 100 people, how come she's got reactions? I said, you tell me. Our biology has changed, as we get older, our ability to process drugs changes. So I think if you're, the answer I would give you is that don't do so. Doctors mean well, they just don't know what to do. And their ego prevents them from going and seeking out. And we have changed healthcare to commercial models where in my days you had to have a library, you had to have journals, and I've taught in the UK, I've lived abroad. There people still go and have a cup of coffee and read a journal. We've commercialized, but I have a feeling that I think we've hit the peak, and this whole value system is changing. I think you can be a driver of the change. 
I hope that answers your question. Small bit adding to what Dr. Kala said, and if you give doctors today the power of making that decision with the help of the analytics, where the real time basis, so one of the beauty is the real time basis analytics is taking over. So which means today you are talking, today you are putting the feeding the information into the system and it's churning and helping you in making that decision or at least giving you the clear perspective. So that real-time decision-making systems will actually encourage doctors to look into these things in the coming days. I mean, it's a challenge for the entire industry. If you look at the entire value chain of the pharma, uh, from a patient to doctor to pharmaceutical company and the payers, the insurance companies, and eventually the Ayushman Bharat, everything is eventually going to be interlinked. And I think that's where you are going to be part of that. Sir, change. the government is absorbing 60 health schemes into one. Sir. And their basic thing is that we need an electronic health record because without that you can't do anything. Yeah. So analytics has got to be at the heart of it. Heart of it, yeah. The heart of it. The doctor doesn't do it because he doesn't have it. You give it to him, he's going to look at it. Let me tell you that. See, the entire world of diagnostic imaging has changed. G sponsored a study where they've gone into KI, they've taken all the scans that they've done and today they are building predictive so that the doctor looks at your scan, he's getting a prompt that if this is the solution, this is of this size, please look for one, two, three, four, five. A decision is still with the doctor, but based on an experience of five million x-rays being read on say a certain tumor or a cancer, prompt comes and I am concerned already. Otherwise, I would have had to think, and I'm worried that I'm going to go out and and my wife is waiting, and the patient is going to go charge and the and the administrator is saying that you have no e-prescription, please open your computer, which is something. So I, I think the change is coming. I think we are at, at the brink of it. We are at the brink of it. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Pratik, sir. is the big question? Okay, so my assumption was that you have come so you all must have done some research, must have studied up a bit on analytics, data science. Yes, no? Yes. Yes and no. Um, see, I understand. Okay, so I have been practicing or practitioner in this field uh, before it became, you know, so called uh, exciting. It was always there. It's not that the analytics was not there. It's just that after McKinsey, I think in 2012, uh, came up with this article and said, uh, data scientist is going to be the sexiest job of the 21st century. After that, everybody said, all right, data scientist was there. So, so don't get kind of mixed up with the term. So data scientist, analyst, um, deep learning specialist, artificial intelligence specialist, machine learning specialist, they all come back to practically the same thing, okay, uh, in terms of what you need to learn and things like that. So big question, um, are there enough jobs, are they well paying jobs, let me get this out of the way before I tell you the more difficult part in the sense, you know, what you need to do to get it. Like they say, na, every industry has potential, uh, but whether you make the most of that potential or not is uh, a largely up to you, kind of support you get and what you do for it. Okay. So, if you go and just Google you know, potential for data science, I am sure you will get a lot of statistics and numbers. Let me see if I have something. Okay, so this is, we will skip this. Okay. These are just numbers. Um, you know, both Kamal and Dr. Kala touched on this. There is this whole movement towards um, evidence-based or a decision system where you have to defend yourself. So culturally, there has been this big thing about boss ne bol diya, mene kar diya. You know, it's very anecdotal, the decision making. Oh, his experience hai, his decision is okay. To a situation where now you are expected to defend your decision. 
this a new question. Why are you taking this decision? And you are basically saying, it's, it's like saying, why are you setting up this shop in this market? Mujhe lagta hai wahan potential hai is one answer. Where you look at my white beard and say, hi, isko pata ho. Versus me coming back and saying, listen, I have analyzed the data. You know, the population in this catchment area is about a million. Of this, about 30% of them order at least once a month. This is the kind of food they order. This is the growth rate. This is the value of food. This is the competition in this area. We have done a survey amongst people who order and this is the kind of satisfaction levels they have. There is a gap for this kind of food. Now, this is support. This is evidence. This is structure. You have gone through a particular process to come at a particular decision, right? Is it easy? Maybe data is missing. Maybe you don't have a lot of data. Maybe you don't have access to data. But this is also cultural to, to the extent of saying somebody is questioning, you are accountable, right? That shift is happening. It's still not, you know, 100%. So we are not like some of the other cultures where it's given that you're supposed to defend your decision. Anybody can question you. You're still not there. But the shift is happening and this is where I think people who understand data, people who can work with data, people who can help users make decisions with the data come into picture. I mean, I'm simplifying the process, but this is what broadly a data scientist does. Okay. These are just some numbers, I'm sure this has gone up more. So many jobs are lying vacant. So there's a nice upward trend, number of vacant jobs. Okay. In the pharma industry, in life sciences, in uh, healthcare, I would ask you to think of uh, Analytics of what you're going to learn from a broader perspective of healthcare. Pharma is part of healthcare. So healthcare has about eight or nine major stakeholders, people who need to take decisions. Um, there are doctors, there are institutions, which is hospitals uh, where doctors operate or independently. There is pharma company, there is diagnostics, there is insurance. Then there is the patient themselves. Now there is a lot of focus of giving data back to the patient. You know, a more aware, a more empowered, a more knowledgeable patient, it has been proven that they are more compliant. They are aware of their health, so they take better care of their own health. Which is why all your uh, variables like Fitbit come into picture, but that's a part of it. And then the biggest of them all is the government. You know, policies. Uh, where should I open primary health care centers? What kind of meds do you store? What kind of doctor should be there? Um, if I can't open, if I'm sending, uh, I'm setting up a camp in a particular village, do I have an awareness of what kind of problems exist there? What kind of doctors should I send? Right? Today it's more like camp lagana hai, it's a KIA, you know, I need a checkbox, ticket, gone free hai chalo. The usual suspect is an eye doctor and a general physician. Uh, Ayushman Bharat, you want to, uh, let's say, for the sake of exercise, let's say I want to insure all of you, all of you in this room. And I'll say, I'll charge 1000 rupees per month from you as insurance, health insurance. Can I decide that? How do I decide thousand rupees lena? How do they decide premium, for example, in insurance? That's your fixed period. They are saying, they said, how much premium is going to be? How much claim is going to be? They are saying, how much claim is going to be? How much claim is going to be? I don't know. You are new. I don't know how many of you have health insurance. You are here. I want to give you health insurance. And I will come and say, you don't have any history. None of you are history. I am not aware of the history. But I want to give you health insurance for 1000 rupees a month. 
how would you go and defend it for example? Let's take evidence-based defending. How do you decide? This is a simple example. I am not looking for maths here. Conceptually, how do you decide? Do you have to take 1,000 or 2,000? Do you have Simple economics, right? How does the insurance company earn? Premium. They should earn more than they spend. That's the first and most simple rule of business. Yes, sir. If I earn 100 rupees, I should spend less than 100 rupees. If I spend more than 100 rupees, it's a matter of time when I shut shop. Correct? Unless you're the government yourself, and then you can go to Nasik, print some more notes, and you're happy. But if you're in private sector, you have to generate some profit. Question is, if I give insurance to all of you, let's say 20 people here, 1,000 rupees a month is 20,000 rupees. So I am earning 2.4 lakhs a year. My question to you would be, how do I know I will be spending less than 2.4 lakhs? कैसे पता? आप इसमें नहीं कितने क्लेम्स आए? आप तो नया हो ना मुझे पता नहीं। You knew right? I don't know. Sir, stats of the area in which we live and populations that are affected by common disease and you're on the right track. All of you are on the right track. You will look for data convergence. You will look for some kind of triage, you know, triangulation of data. So what are you trying to solve here? Let's say you're a data analyst. That's the question that comes to you. The company will say, listen, we want to provide insurance to this group of people. Okay. How much should we charge them? Right. And it might not be a single answer. See, you have to remember something. Analytics or data science is not an exact science. It largely operates on probability. Largely. Some part is exact. But you will always go back and say, I am 95% confident. That's why the confidence interval comes into play. You will always go and say, if you charge 1000 rupees, there is a, uh, let's say 80% chance that you will make losses. Which means you will spend more than 2.4. If you charge 2,000 rupees, you will say there is a 80% chance that you will make a profit. So you operate in basically probabilities and range. Right? So what do I need to know to offer you insurance? I need to know my risk. Right? Which is, what is the risk of the group I am insuring? It's a simple question. Will I end up spending more than 2.4 lakhs or not? Right? Now look at Ayushman Bharat. Now let's look at Ayushman Bharat. Government of India says uh, to the private sector and to any healthcare sector essentially says 5 lakh rupees per family insurance is being given. Population of 100 million people, right? 100 million families, I think. For this, the scheme has been launched. Oh yeah. The government has no idea about the risk in that population group. Right? Because there is no statistics. You don't know what these people are suffering from. This is where relying on past data becomes dangerous. Okay. I'm just taking it one step ahead, just to give you a line of thought. So a lot of data science is about line of thought. Why is looking at past data dangerous here? Let's say I am a poor, I have a poor family, I don't have money. I have been suffering from a particular disorder. Okay. Uh, but since I don't have money, I don't go to a doctor. Maybe I live in an area where the nearest primary healthcare center is 6 kilometers away. With no transport facilities available, which means if I have to go there and come, my whole day is lost. I can't afford not to work. Let's say. Which means there is absolutely no data about me anywhere. It's like just because I haven't gone to a doctor 
doesn't mean I am healthy. Right? And there might be a lot of people like this. So just by looking at the population and say, in this area, you know, sirf 100 people have gone to a doctor. Doesn't mean the remaining 2,000 people are, don't have an issue. Now suddenly if they are gone and told, let's say, what is the government relying on? The government is relying on the fact that even though you have insurance, you don't use it. That's what all insurance companies hope, right? Have insurance, lelo, but don't use it. Right? Because you're healthy. Not for any other reason, but because you're healthy. But now this family says, I've got 5 lakh rupees to spend. And it is not a problem, it is not a problem. We have to do it. So they will go and do it. Right? And that's what started happening. Now suddenly the government feels, Are, now I offered this scheme, now I can't take it back. So now what do you do? If you are a government, what do you do? Put terms and conditions. And what kind of? This is nothing to do with analytics. Just in general, if your government, what would you do? Suddenly you are finding that everybody is spending so much money. What do you do? You will do what all governments do best. You can't control the demand. Right? Control the supply. So you go to a hospital and you say, this procedure ka aapko mein sirf 1000 rupees hoga. Right? You are basically controlling the cost on a private side. That's all you do, right? But where does it all start? It basically starts with incomplete information. It starts with the fact that you hardly have any evidence. It starts with the fact that we have not tuned our decision making to take into account the entire process. <coughs> and this is what is changing. Definitely in private sector it's changing. In governments also it will change. Slightly more resistant to change. You know. But let me tie it back. So you know, I think people have mentioned it. I would really encourage you to go just Google and check. Um, potential wise, I think this is scratching the surface. But I have seen the transformation in the last six, seven years. You would have seen transformation in your, own, in your own personal lives. Today you assume, you think of something as a normal. I just think about it five years back. Um, streaming content. How oh, okay. So if we have to take a bet today, how long do you think these channels would last? Um, HBO, Star Movies, Z Cinema. Just think about it. Are these channel, channels any more relevant at all? We can access the contents somewhere else. Or? On demand. Streaming, right? What do you think? Actually, what do you think? Except that not everybody has access to data, that's all. Okay. It's a new normal for you today. But if I told you the same thing four years back or five years back, you would have said no. The data speeds kya We used to be very happy to get a uh, 10 Mbps, not 10 Mbps, that's too low. Sir, what should we be? So, KGs may measure that. So, one male Ghana may say, no, are you the one Mbps attachment? Lagadia, wait, and time will be if somebody came and told you the same thing you are experiencing today, four, five years back, six years back, you would have said, I don't know what will happen. Might not happen. Smartphones, very simple. Five, six years, seven years back, 80% of the people, 90% of the people were on feature phones without data. <coughs> they say, What's up? Kya yaar? Kya kind of thing. So there's so many things that one feels might take a long time to happen, but few years down the line you will be questioning career. It's so obvious, everybody should do it. It becomes a new normal. And I have seen analytics become mainstream like that in the last seven, eight years. From being seen as something which uh, 
you know, uh, with so-called brainy folks do. That was the perception. To say, no, everybody needs analytics. Everybody can do analytics, which is actually true. The tools have become very democratic now. You know, earlier you had to be like a programmer. You needed, you needed to know the core languages, C++, Java, Osap, RS. Today you don't need to know all that. So the whole process has become democratic. The data collection process has become easier. Storage has become so cheap. You know? it's, it's like you can buy for $10 a lot of space in the cloud. You can store your lifetime of data in it, practically. So the ecosystem has changed so much. Now it is not a question of uh, whether, you know, it's a question of more of how. Now people are not questioning, is data useful? Now it's a question of saying, how do I use this data? How do I take better decisions? So the focus has shifted away from uh, basics to now more specifics. Think, what kind of decisions can I take? If yesterday you could think of just two questions to answer, today you are thinking four more. Mm -hmm. okay. Today, every line manager comes up and says, Are data say, can I get some more value? I will give you the simplest of questions in the pharma industry. And it's the most difficult question to answer. Pharma industry spends tons of money on doctors. How many of you from life sciences pharma? Most of you? Yes. Okay. So pharma companies, they have MRs going all over the place, right? Yes. What is their job? Their job is to go meet doctors. Yes. Why? They want to motivate the doctors to write their brand. Yes. Okay. The most difficult question for them to answer is which doctor is writing how many? How many times? In your territory you are meeting 25 doctors. Can you say which doctor is writing how many prescriptions with your product? It's the most difficult question to answer but this is the answer to which or rather, this is the answer you are seeking for because you are spending all that money. Right? And there is no accurate way for them to know. Do you know how they go and find it? The medical shops. From medical shops. Correct. They polling the chemist. They write the chemist. They write the doctor. Ne likhi hai, yes. Right? They write the MR. He goes to the doctor also. He goes to the chemist also. Yes. He pays here also. He pays there also. You know? To find out or to collect data which is so inaccurate ki uski relevancy kuch nahi but then what can you do? you have to send the data up the hierarchy kyunki aapka zonal manager fir aapka regional manager fir aapka national manager fir aapka asia pacific head everybody wants that data you know which doctor and then basis which you decide ki is doctor ko you know how do we treat the doctor things like that it's the dirtiest data, most inaccurate data, and if you have a solution for this, pharma companies will make you rich over them. Okay? okay? Practically. Okay? But this is just, as, as I'm saying, this was not a big question till few years back. It was taken as, as he chalega. Kush news. But today, people realize, yeah, nahin. why? So today solutions are coming up. It's a matter of time. I think in the next four, five years, we'll have very accurate data. Fairly accurate data on this. Then the, uh, the question which I want to place in front of you is, once you have accurate data, how does it help you? For example, how does it help you? Let's say you are MR, and you actually know, hey, mere doctor mein se sa kitna mere brand hai. Very accurately. You know. How does it help you in your job? Doctor, which will be prescribing less, so the main focus will be on one that doctor. That is one way of looking at it. Right? Yeah. See, yeah, the other prescriber will also give us other time spent. No, so, that's the other way of looking at it. Like, uh, we can just uh, explain about how we connect to the doctors which are prescribing more. But the doctor is prescribing less, we have to give the, like, more focus on 
for the old products also and for the upcoming products also. I think you All also, I'm saying is, sorry to interrupt, you also have to read the psychology of the product. Yeah. Because your competitor may be offering him a trip to Thailand somewhere in the middle. If he crosses a certain model prescription, which is the tragedy of healthcare. I'm saying, you probably have to read the guy that is he genuinely not interested in my drug or is there some extraneous factor? So the business change will be the question you ask changes now. That's it. The question you ask becomes, think, ki kaun kitna kar rahe si jada, it will become, why is not going there? Your messaging changes. It is what I'm talking about the focus. Why right. is not right. So, you know, we say no, vision unfold. It's like, today you can only see so far. But once you reach that point, the question changes, the vision changes. So from a potential point of view, I think, uh, uh, the, one of the LinkedIn has said that there's been a thousand percent increase in people saying data science or analytics as part of their profile in India in the last one year. Yeah. So imagine thousand percent, obviously it's no train to win it. It's also a very good magnet, you know. Um, but I can also tell you this much because we hire also. Uh, we have a business where we hire people to do analytics, we have clients is that we stopped relying on CVs, very honestly. Um, now it's basically do and show, it's as simple as that. Uh, we give a problem, we'll see how you solve it, right? Because there's so much content available on the web. Uh, we can just Google it and find it, but that doesn't mean anything. Finally, what does it mean to be job ready for us when we hire? What does it mean to be job ready? It's very different. Uh, just having gone through a few YouTube videos and downloaded Python on the laptop and having run some standard scripted codes of Python is not job ready. Right? That's the leap all of us.